Hi, I'm Christine. I'll be running through the census form with you to help you complete it. Before I start, I want to share some information about the census. Every five years, the Australian Bureau of Statistics counts every person and household in Australia. This is called the census. It asks questions about things like your age, country of birth, religion, ancestry, language used at home, work and education. This year, the census is on Tuesday, 10th of August. Census data is used to help plan services for our families and communities, from healthcare and education to transport and infrastructure. The census is compulsory. You need to include everyone in your household on Tuesday, 10th of August on your census form. This includes visiting family and friends, international visitors and babies. The personal information you provide in the census is protected by law. It is not shared with other government agencies or anyone else. You cannot be identified by the information you share about yourself or your family. You may be watching this session while in COVID-19 lockdown. We've recorded this fill-in form session online to help you complete your form from home. I will read out the question and explain why we asked that question and how you can answer it. There are 65 questions in the census, and so there is a lot of information in this video. However, you can pause to answer the question, check in with someone, or take a break. Before we start the census, make sure you have your form. By now, you will have either received a census letter so you can complete online or a paper form. If you're completing online, you need the letter you received in the mail or your paper form. Use a separate device, for example, phone, tablet or laptop, to the one you're watching this video on. Go to census.abs.gov.au and enter your census number and temporary password. This is on your letter or paper form. You will be prompted to create a new password. Follow the steps and select Start Census. If you're completing by paper form, get your paper form and a blue or black pen. When marking the boxes, use a horizontal line, not a tick. Use capital letters and write only one letter per box. Leave a blank box if you need to put a space. Remember, you need to write down all your answers. If you make a mistake, that's okay. You can draw a diagonal line through the box and move it to the next empty box. So now we'll commence the census questions. The first three questions on the paper form are about your dwelling. Dwellings are houses. Question one, what is the address of this dwelling? Complete as many of the address details as you can see for the house you are staying at on census night. This includes the apartment, flat or unit number if applicable, street number, suburb, state or territory, postcode, and property or building name if applicable. There will be more questions about your address later on. Question two, who spent the night of Tuesday 10th of August 2021 in this dwelling? Question three, in total, how many people spent the night of Tuesday 10th of August 2021 in this dwelling? This is asking who is living in the house as well as people visiting overnight, so no one is missed. Include anyone who slept in the house on census night. This includes yourself, your husband or wife, adult family members, including adult children, parents, brothers, sisters, and any other family members. It also includes babies, children, and teenagers, unrelated housemates, flatmates or boarders, and visitors or friends who are staying overnight. Also include anyone who usually lives in the house who returned on Wednesday 11th of August 2021 without being included on a form elsewhere. For example, someone who worked night shift. Question four and five, who is away on census night? Question four, who is away on the night of Tuesday 10th of August 2021 but usually lives in this dwelling? Question five, in total, how many people were away on the night of Tuesday, 10th of August, 2021? You should include anyone who usually lives in the house but was away on census night. For example, people away on holiday, including people who are overseas, 
people away for work in hospital or away for another reason overnight or longer, people staying with friends or relatives, students staying away at boarding school, and children in shared care arrangements staying elsewhere on census night. There will be more questions about people who are away on census night later on. If no one was away, select no one away. Question six to 11. This collects personal information for people in this household on census night, including visitors. Remember who you record as person one and person two on the form. Person one should be an adult who has a meaningful relationship to most of the people in the house. For example, in a family with parents and children, person one would usually be one of the parents. Person two to six on the paper form or three to 25 on the online form should be all other people in the house on census night. If there are more than six people at the house, the easiest way to complete your census is online. You can request an extra paper form on our website or by calling 1800 130 250. You will need to enter the census number on the front of the form. Question six, name of each person, including visitors who spent the night of Tuesday 10th of August 2021 in this dwelling. This includes the person's first or given name and their surname or family name. If there is a baby in the house who has not been given a name yet, enter baby for first or given name. If someone in your house is completing a separate form, do not provide their name on the main form. Question seven, is the person male, female or non-binary sex? Non-binary sex is for people who are not exclusively male or female. For example, people who are intersex. Question eight, what is the person's date of birth and age? Date of birth is the date the person was born. Age is the person's age in years on census night. If the person is less than one year old, write zero in the age box. If a person does not know their date of birth or age, answer with the best guess of age. Question nine, what is the person's relationship to person one and person two? No answer is required for person one. If more than one response is relevant, select the relationship that most closely applies. If the relationship to person one or person two is not listed in the response options, use the please specify text boxes to provide the relationship. Question 10, what is the person's current marital status? Married refers to registered marriages. If a person is a child and therefore not married, select never married. If the person is divorced or widowed and has remarried, select married. If the person is divorced and has not remarried, select divorced. If the person lives in a de facto relationship. If the person is in a de facto relationship and has not been in a registered marriage, select never married. Question 11, is the person of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander origin? For people of both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander origin, select both yes boxes. Question 12, where does the person usually live? If you are completing the census at your usual address, mark same as in question one on the paper form. If you are completing the census online, the address you entered the first question will be listed as the first option. If you are living at another address, mark elsewhere in Australia and complete the address details. For people who usually live in another country and who are visiting Australia for less than one year, select other country. Question 13, where did the person usually live one year ago at 10th of August, 2020? Question 14, where did the person usually live five years ago at the 10th of August, 2016? Asking where the person lived one year ago helps us understand how people are moving between places in the short term. This can tell us about short term migration patterns and what impacts they have on communities. 
The information about where someone lived five years ago tells us how many people have changed location since the last census. This is important to help us to understand population movements over time. Provide as much detail for the address as possible. Question 15. Is the person an Australian citizen? If the person is an Australian citizen, select yes, Australian citizen. Otherwise, select no. If the person has dual citizenship and one is Australian, select yes, Australian citizen. Question 16. In which country was the person born? The options included on the form are Australia, England, New Zealand, India, Philippines, Vietnam and Italy. If the person's country of birth is not listed, provide the name of the country in the other please specify box. China is not listed as an option, but in the please specify box you can write China, Hong Kong, Macau or Taiwan. Question 17. In what year did the person first arrive in Australia to live for one year or more? This question is only asked if the person was born outside of Australia. Provide the year the person first arrived in Australia, not the year of their most recent arrival. Question 18. In which country was the person's father born? Question 19. In which country was the person's mother born? For all countries of birth that are not Australia, provide the name of the country in the box. After the other, please specify option. Question 20. Does the person use a language other than English at home? If the person uses only English at home, select no, English only. If they can speak another language, the options included on the form are Mandarin, Arabic, Cantonese, Vietnamese, Italian and Greek. For all other languages, select yes, other language, please specify and provide the name of the language. If more than one language other than English is used, provide the language that is most often used. If the person lives alone, answer with the language they most commonly use with visitors in their home. Question 21. How well does the person speak English? This question is only asked for people who reported they use a language other than English at home. The options included on the form are very well, well, not well, or not at all. Leave this question blank for people who cannot speak. This includes children who are too young to speak. Question 22. What is the person's ancestry? Provide up to two ancestries only. If more than two ancestries apply, provide the two ancestries the person most closely identifies with. Ancestry refers to the ethnic or cultural origins of the person and can be thought of as the background of their parents or grandparents. The options included on the form are English, Irish, Scottish, Chinese, Italian, German, Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander and Australian. Write any other ancestries in the space provided. Question 23, what is the person's religion? Answering this question is optional. The options included on the form are no religion, Catholic, Anglican, Uniting Church, Islam, Buddhism, Presbyterian, Hideoism, Greek Orthodox, Baptist. For other religions, select the other please specify option and provide the details in the box. If a person's religion is an Orthodox religion such as Macedonian Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox or Armenian Orthodox, provide the full name of the religion in the other please specify box. Need for assistance for questions 24 to 26. These questions ask about the help people might need to do everyday things and to be part of community life. Question 24, does the person ever need someone to help 
with or be with them for self-care activities. For example, doing everyday activities such as eating, showering, dressing or toileting. People who can take care of themselves at home but need help with grocery shopping or other jobs should answer no to this question. Question 25, does the person ever need someone to help with or be with them for body movement activities? This question is about the help a person needs to move their body, for example, getting out of bed, moving around at home or places away from home. Mobility aids and modifications around the home aren't considered help. Question 26, does the person ever need someone to help with or be with them for communication activities? This question is about help a person needs talking to others or listening to others. Hearing aids and other communication devices are not considered help provided by a person. Question 27, what are the reasons for the need for assistance or supervision shown in questions 24, 25 and 26? This question asks why someone who answered yes to the previous questions might need help. If you have a paper form and selected no for all the previous three questions, select no for need for assistance. If a person needs help with communication due to difficulties with English and they would not need the same help if they were communicating in another language, select difficulty with English language. If the person needs assistance because they are a young child, mark old or young age. Question 28. Has the person been told by a doctor or nurse that they have any of these long-term health conditions? A long-term health condition is one that has lasted or is expected to last for six months or more. Include any conditions that go away but come back from time to time, any conditions that the person needs to take pills or medication to keep under control, any conditions that are in remission, Select all the conditions that apply. The options are asthma, cancer, including cancer that is in remission, dementia, including Alzheimer's, diabetes, excluding gestational diabetes, heart disease, including heart attack or angina, kidney disease, lung condition, including COPD or emphysema, mental health condition, including depression or anxiety, stroke. If the person has other long-term health conditions, select any other long-term health condition. If the person has no long-term health conditions, select no long-term health condition. Questions 29 and 30 regarding education and training. Question 29, is the person attending a school or other education institution? This question asks if a person is going to school or currently studying for a certificate or degree. It also asks if they're going full-time or part-time. Only include people who are currently going to school or studying in this question. This includes children in kindergarten. The child is considered a full-time student if they go to kindergarten for 15 hours or more in one week. If you are going to school or studying for a hobby or for fun, Select no. Full-time, part-time should be answered based on what the person's school, university or TAFE considers their course to be. All apprentices and trainees are considered to be enrolled in part-time study. If a person is currently studying at home because of COVID restrictions, but usually attends a school or other education institution, select one of the yes options. Question 30. What type of education institution is the person attending? Only include people who are currently going to school or studying in this question. Children in kindergarten should be filled in the form as in primary school. Other non-government includes all other independent schools, including Christian schools. It excludes Catholic schools. If a person is studying online or by correspondence and not going in person, select the type of school or institution that they are enrolled in. For students going to a combined primary and secondary school, also called a K-12 school, select the level of schooling based on the year level they are currently in. 
for a person currently studying at home because of COVID-19 restriction, restrictions, select the type of education institution the person usually attends or is enrolled in. Question 31, only continue for people aged 15 years or more. The online form will skip the following questions for people under the age of 15. School or study that has been completed in questions 32 to 36. The next set of questions ask about schooling or study that a person has already completed. Question 32, what is the highest year of primary or secondary school this person has completed? Mark the highest year the person has finished not the year they are currently studying in. If the highest year of schooling the person finished was in primary school, select year eight or below. Question 33, has the person completed any educational qualification? This question asks if people have completed or recognized or accredited training such as TAFE certificates and university degrees. If the person hasn't done any study after they left primary or secondary school, select no. If the person is currently studying an apprenticeship certificate or degree and doesn't already have one, select no, still studying for first qualification. If the person has finished studying a certificate or doing an apprenticeship for a trade, plumber, hairdressing, cabinet making, etc., select yes, trade certificate, apprenticeship. Include certificate, diploma or degree in yes, other qualification. Question 34, what is the level of the highest qualification the person has completed? Provide as much detail as possible about any certificate the person has completed. For example, write certificate two instead of just cert. Qualification levels listed from highest to lowest are doctorate, PhD, master degree, graduate diploma, graduate certificate, bachelor degree with honours, bachelor degree, associate degree, advanced diploma, diploma, associate diploma, advanced certificate, certificate four or post trade, certificate three or trade, certificate two, certificate one. Question 35, what is the main field of study for the person's highest qualification completed? Some examples are plumbing, primary school teaching, accounting, hairdressing or hospitality. Question 36, did the person complete this qualification before 1998? Question 37, for each female, how many babies has the person ever given birth to? Do not include any adopted, foster or stepchildren. Question 38, what is the total of all income the person usually receives? This may not be the amount that ends up in the bank account. The total income is the amount someone receives before any tax, Centrelink deduction or rent is paid. All income should be counted. This includes money the person earns from a job, money they are paid from the government, money they earn from a business they own, royalties and money they earn from any hobbies. For people currently living under COVID restrictions, report the total income usually received before the restrictions began. Question 39, last week did the person have a job of any kind? A job means any type of work, including casual, temporary, full-time or part-time work if it was for one hour or more. If a person is not working because of COVID restrictions, but worked in the four weeks prior to the current restrictions, select yes, but absent on holidays, on paid leave, on strike, or temporarily stood down. If the person did not work in the four weeks prior to the current restrictions, select no, did not have a job. Do not include any unpaid voluntary work. For people who did not have a job, go to question 51. The online form will automatically skip the questions that don't apply. For those who selected yes but absent on holidays, on paid leave, on strike or temporarily stood down due to COVID lockdown, think of the main job that you had before the current restrictions for the next eight questions.
Question 40. In the main job held last week, was the person working for an employer or working in their own business? If the person had more than one job last week, then main job refers to the job in which the person usually works the most hours. People should select working in own business if they run their own business. If the person worked in their own business and also worked for another employer, they should answer for the job where they worked the most hours. The next two questions are only for people who answered working in own business. Question 41. Was the person's business unincorporated? Incorporated. For example, proprietary limited. Most small businesses will be unincorporated. Question 42. Does the pers person's business employ people? Include the people employed in the person's business for an ongoing basis on census night. The options are no employees other than the owner or owners, 1 to 19 employees, or 20 or more employees. Question 43. In the main job held last week, what was the person's occupation? This question is asking what the person's job title is. Only answer for the person's main job, the job where they work the most hours. Report the job title in as much detail as possible. Some examples include house cleaner, retail assistants, chefs and truck drivers. Question 44. What are the main tasks that the person usually performs in that occupation? Report the main tasks the person usually does in their job each day in as much detail as possible. Question 45. For the main job held last week, what was the employer's business name? The question is asking the name of the business or organisation where the person works. Question 46. What best describes the industry or business of the employer at the location where the person works? Some examples include domestic cleaning service, takeaway food services, and painting services. Question 47. What are the main goods produced or main services provided by the employer's business? For example, if the person works as a domestic house cleaner, then the organisation they work for provides house cleaning. Question 48. For the main job held last week, what was the person's workplace address? Provide the address where the person worked. Provide as much information as possible, for example, street number, street name, suburb or town. For people who are working from home temporarily due to COVID restrictions, provide the address of the usual workplace. Question 49. How did the person get to work on Census Day, Tuesday, 10th of August, 2021? Mark all the ways the person got to work. For example, if the person drove a car to a bus stop, then took a bus to work, mark both the car as driver and bus boxes. Question 50. Last week, how many hours did the person work in all jobs? This includes all hours the person worked in all of the jobs they had in the week before census night, even if those are not their usual hours, and any overtime and time worked from home for their jobs. Time off work such as sick leave or annual leave is not included. If the person did not work any hours, including due to COVID restrictions, write zero. Question 51. Did the person actively look for work at any time in the last four weeks? Some examples include applying for a job, contacting friends or family about work, having a job interview, or registering or talking with employment providers. If the person is looking for both full-time and part-time work, select yes, looked for full-time work. Full-time work means 35 hours or more per week. If people registered with Centrelink as a job seeker for a job seeker payment in the last four weeks, select no, did not look for work. Question 52. If the person had found a job, could the person have started work last week? The question is only for people who selected yes, looked for full-time work or yes, looked for part-time work in the previous question. Question 53, 
has the person ever served in the Australian Defence Force? This question is about people who have served in the Army, Air Force or other parts of the Australian Defence Force. Do not include service for non-Australian Defence Forces. Question 54. In the last 12 months, did the person spend any time doing unpaid voluntary work for an organisation or group? This could include help given without pay to a charity, sports club or sports event, church group, nursing home, school or school events or serving on a committee. Do not include work for a family business or other paid employment, work done to get a government payment, work done as part of completing study or work done because of court or community service orders. Question 55. In the last week, did the person spend time doing unpaid domestic work for their household? This question is about everyday household tasks such as cooking and cleaning that people don't get paid for. It does not include any household activities that were done as part of a paid job and any unpaid care for children, elderly parents and people with long-term illness or disability. This is asked about in the next questions. Question 56. In the last two weeks, did the person spend time providing unpaid care, help or assistance to family members or others because of a disability, a long-term health condition or problems related to old age? This question is about unpaid help the person gives to someone who is sick, has a disability or needs help to take care of themselves. Include help such as bathing, dressing, moving around, emotional support, cleaning, cooking, gardening, being understood or understanding others, occasional help such as taking someone to appointments or social activities. Question 57. In the last two weeks, did the person spend time looking after a child without pay? This includes helping a child with homeschooling due to COVID restrictions. Only include care for children who were under 15. Make sure to include looking after the person's own children. Personal information of people who are away on census night, questions 58 and 59. On the online form, if you have answered that no one was away on census night, you will skip the next few questions. If you were completing on the paper form and you said at the start of the form that there were people away on census night, you should answer the next few questions about these people. Question 58. Were there any people away on the night of Tuesday 10th of August 2021 who usually live at this dwelling? This refers to people who usually live at this address but were away on census night. The person may be away because they are in hospital, staying with relatives or friends, on a short-term work assignment, on holidays, a student away at boarding school, or a child in share care arrangement staying elsewhere on census night. Shift workers such as nurses, truck drivers, guards, who spent the night of Tuesday, August 10th, 2021 at work, but returned to the house on Wednesday, 11th of August, should be counted at this address instead of as away. Question 59. For each person away, complete the following questions. Remember that each person will also need to complete the census form for where they were in Australia on census night. For each person, provide the name of the person, their sex, date of birth and age, if the person is Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander origin, if the person is a full-time student, what the person's relationship is to person one, person two. Question 60 to 64. If you are using an online form for the dwelling and housing questions will only be available once all the people in the dwelling have answered the questions. Question 60. How many registered motor vehicles owned or used by residents of this dwelling were garaged or parked at or near this dwelling on the night of Tuesday 10th of August? Motor vehicles include cars, utilities, light trucks and other vehicles like motorhomes and motorised cranes. Do not include tractors, boats, 
heavy vehicles, motorcycles and scooters. Registered means that a vehicle is registered with a government authority and can be legally driven on public roads. Question 61. How many bedrooms are there in this dwelling? Include in the number of bedrooms or rooms that were designed as a bedroom, even if they are being used for another purpose, for example, such as an office. Do not include areas such as the main room, dining room or veranda, even if people are using these to sleep. Question 62. Is this dwelling owned outright? Owned with a mortgage? Purchased under a shared equity scheme? Rented? Occupied rent free? Occupied under a life tenure scheme or other? Question 63. Who is this dwelling being rented from? The options are real estate agent, government housing authority, for example, the housing department or public housing, community housing provider, parent or other relative not in this dwelling, manager of a residential park, including caravan parks and manufactured home estates, employer, the government, including Defence Housing Australia, or employer private. Community housing providers are not-for-profit organisations such as charity or a church group that provide rental housing to people on lower incomes. Government housing authorities such as the housing department, rental dwellings can also be known as public housing. Question 64. How much does your household pay for this dwelling? The information is used to get an idea of how many people pay for housing in different parts of Australia. This can help us to understand how the cost of rent or a mortgage affects households and the ability to afford other things. Include the total amount even if the costs are shared between different people. If you don't know the exact amount, provide your best estimate. Only provide an amount for one of the time periods, for example, per week or per fortnight or per month. Don't answer the question if you fully own your house. Question 65. Does each person agree to their name, address and other information on this form being kept by the National Archives of Australia and then made publicly available after 99 years? Answering this question is optional. This question is, uh, is asking if the person agrees to have their name, address and other information collected made available to the public in 99 years time. Check with each person in the house before answering the question. If no or left blank, information is not kept by the National Archives. If a person's view is not known, leave this question blank for that person. For children, answer this question only if agreement is given by their parent or legal guardian. Otherwise, leave this question blank for that person. Legal guardians can answer on behalf of adults who are legally not able to make a choice. If you do not have the guardian's agreement, leave this question blank. Thanks very much for joining me today and taking the time to complete your census. Every single response matters. If you used a paper form, you need to mail it back to us using the reply paid envelope provided. Census data will be released from mid next year and will be used to help plan important services and programs for our communities. Your participation helps build a better future for us all. For more information, visit www.census.abs.gov.au. Thank you again and please stay safe.